everybody. Thank you for coming to this afternoon's screening of Can a Song Save Your Life? My name is Carrie Craddock. I'm the Senior Manager of Programming here at the festival. We're very fortunate to have a couple special guests with us this afternoon. Before I introduce them, just like to tell you, give you a couple minutes to tell you how it's going to go. Uh, please raise your hands high and wave them around so we can find you. I'll try to repeat the questions for the benefit of everybody else here. Okay, without further ado, please join me in welcoming the director and producer of Can a Song Save Your Life, John Carney and Anthony Brink. vibe in terms of how the film 
was shot in terms of what the dynamic was on set, that everybody kind of became versions of themselves in their characters. Yeah, that's true. Okay. You know, amazingly, you know, CeeLo plays a hip hop star. <laughs> Hard to believe. <laughs> You're in blue over here on the aisle. Why did you pick New York above any other city? There's an Irish accent now. <laughs> oh, I need to give you a hug now. I feel so far away from home. Um, well, New York is obviously the city where dreams come true, and it was there or Los Angeles, and Los Angeles is shit. And <laughs> city where dreams come true and it's so, um, it seemed appropriate that if you wanted to tell a story about a young couple facing into the music industry that you know, New York was the city to do it in above any other. And it's just a, and it photographs your own or our DOP just shot the movie so perfectly and uh, managed to capture, and it's such a cliche, the idea of a city being a character in a movie, he really made that come to life. And, you, know, you see all the scaffolding, and, you know, kind of like the, the way we shot was very sort of real and naturalistic. So. And, and I would also say that one of the great things about John making this movie in New York is that, is, is that John w was at certainly at the beginning of the movie a tourist in New York and had this great romantic notion of New York and that is kind of combined with who he was you know, four months into New York after you know, living there and getting into bicycle accidents and getting, <laughs> and getting I'm going to say it. A homeless person's urine thrown into his eye. <laughs> so then he became a real New Yorker. <laughs> and, uh, and, that, and, that, and, and the movie has those two elements to it the kind of grittiness of New York and the, and the romantic version of New York. I have to ask this just because after we saw it, we were debating you know, amongst ourselves where would the next one be set if you were ever going to do another one? The next film. What city would be the next character? Toronto. Certainly after this week. Absolutely. Um, that's a good question, actually. New York, it's hard to know Dublin, New York. Berlin's a funky city, and Prague's a great city. You could do the European, there could be a sequel, Anthony. You never know, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, okay, we'll go someone over here, yep. Yeah. In the white one, in the middle there, yep. Yeah. Hi, um, as somebody who lived in New York for a whole while, I want to say it's a beautiful representation of what it feels like to live in the city. And do you have any stories while you were filming of like funny things that happened? Because the, the urine wasn't good enough? <laughs> 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 there's a lot of things that happened while you were like, playing outdoors and somebody else you were like, what sort of things happened? It was, it was a relatively incident-free sort of shoot, apart from the homeless urine, which is, um, you know, yeah, the homeless urine was good. Um, what happened to us? I mean, the, the, the paparazzi thing I found as a sort of an Irish filmmaker interesting, just because it doesn't happen at home. Nobody gives a fuck. Huh? Adam and Kira, yeah, particularly, and Kira a lot, but, you know, I remember doing the film with, the, again, the once, thing with Glenn, who was actually, you know, people knew in Ireland and stuff, and it was, they just walked past, they didn't care. <laughs> and they'd be like, oh, there's your man from the frames, but so like, not doing too well. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so nobody cares, but, but in New York, there was, a, the, I, I guess I found it interesting, the whole, I had a real love-hate relationship um, with the paparazzi, but just uh, my personal experience, just sort of, because, you know, after two or three days, and it was like they were clicking away during a lot of scenes, and it was very hard to get the tape that I wanted, very hard to get sound, and they were like, shh, 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 and it's literally like a 35 millimeter camera. It's, it's like. In, in, when we were shooting in, you, you know the scene in Washington Square Park under the arch where they're recording? If you turned around, you know, it looks like, oh, there's five people, you know, recording an album there. There were 400 people behind it, you know, who had to be held back by cops and PAs as they were all taking pictures, both tourists and paparazzi. Yeah. When did you film it? Yeah. Last summer. Last summer. Yeah. 
Thank you. Can yeah. I go down into the middle here? How was it like the actors like saying song and how was that with Kira? What was the songwriting process like and what was it like working with Kira who had never uh, sung before? Although she had in one film, I think, right? Um, she had sung a little sort of tune in, in another film. It was a real adventure actually doing the songs for this film. Um, uh, and I collaborated with a guy called Greg Alexander, who I think is probably here. If he is, he Greg, are you here? Back. There he is, right there. Let me just go. that that relationship 
sort of stay platonic, because actually, contrary to the, I'm an old romantic, and I, I love a bit of kissing and hugging and all that, and crossing boundaries that shouldn't be crossed. And, <laughs> and it was funny, because I, the, you know, the, the, the thing with Kira and Mark throughout the, the film sort of waves along, and there's moments where it's like, oh, could it go, and you kind of don't want it to, which Anthony had to remind me of numerous occasions that I said, oh, let them hold hands here, or maybe just kiss, and he's like, you can't have your cake and eat it. <laughs> That's like life, you can't, it's art we're making here. <laughs> so, but you're right, there is a continuity. I think, I think, I'm a Quiet Man fan, you know, the Irish film, The Quiet Man. I love how frustrating that romance is. You know, they, they do kiss, but it's like, it's all, they keep getting stopped having that romance. I don't know if you've seen The Quiet Man recently, but at each stage they're just about to sort of come together and the brother comes in the way, or some old tradition of courting comes in the way. And it's, it's wonderful, and I grew up with that film in sort of an anticipation of, of love, and I'm very interested in it. And I like the idea of, you know, Mark going back to his family and the reality of that and the sort of the, the cold shower of that. Okay, we have time for one more question. You've had your hand up for a while, but... Was Adam Levine always your first choice? He did a great job transferring his pop persona to the screen. Um, no, Adam came up uh, and I'm trying to see. He, I'll tell you what happened actually. Jonah Hill sent us an email, who's a friend of Adam, saying, by the way, it, I heard that you're thinking about Adam for this film. Just so you know, Adam is like the coolest, most artful, <laughs> like idiot, fun, goofy clever, smart guy, you should totally cast him in your movie. Um, and I've grown up with him. So that's a pretty amazing recommendation from Jeremy Hill, but I think he's a terrific actor. And, um, you know, because I thought by Adam a little bit, being an Irish guy, I thought the voice, and I thought, you know, he's so fucking good looking, it's annoying. <laughs> <laughs> and that, you know, that's right for the part, but can he deliver on these other dimensions of the character? And uh, the Jonah Hill email, Made me, made me go and meet him, and when I met him, it was just like a slam dunk. He's so, Adam is so characterful and funny, and he's lived a life in a way that sort of the, he knew about this character. He really wasn't pretending. He wasn't like going, oh, I wonder what Dave is like. He was like, I've been in that situation. I've um, come to the city wide-eyed and had these things thrown at me, and I've made decisions based on, you know, being in a certain position at a certain time. And so he was, he was wonderful, and I, I just think he, you know, makes that side of the movie really, really come to life. You know, sure would agree. And, and he really, he put himself, he stuck his neck out for it. He put yeah. himself on tape, he recorded songs. He, yeah. he, he campaigned for it in a way yeah. that you wouldn't think a huge rock star like that would. I know, and we, are, we were back to, so you laughed, the, the beards were doing a little bit of work on the first time you see. But, but, um, he was like, every day he would come to, just to, to set with that beard, and he would just stand beside me like this and go, I hate you, you make me look like such a douche. <laughs> so yeah, there's this thing in the film, the douche scale. Which is like, he begins when he arrives in New York and he's clean shaven and he's douche two, maybe like a two, because he's, he's like, because uh, the fame the fans come up to him, so like, then he's like got the mustache, douche four. <laughs> and then it's like the beard is like, oh, you're all the way, you're the way. Death con douche. <laughs> <laughs> well, he was sitting beside me when that, when everybody laughed because we showed the film here last night, and Kira and Adam were here, sitting right there, and uh, I was sitting beside him. And uh, it's funny, actually, the thing about Adam is Adam is so um, physical on set. He's jumping around, he's playing the piano, he's going over here. He's like, where the fuck is Adam? And he's gone. <laughs> he's, he's brilliant like that. But last night, he's just sat there really still, like a kid that he, I brought to the cinema or something, was like, and then he sat there and that scene came up with the beard and he just leant into me and said, uh, I hate you forever. <laughs> well, we love you forever. <laughs>